Hey everyone, what's up? It's Yuma here. Uh, today I'm back with another video. In this video I'm going to be showing you how to kill the Queen Black Dragon. There are a few things I want to talk about just before we get into the fight. Uh, just the fight itself and then we'll be talking about inventory loadout, uh, equipment loadout, stuff like that. So Queen Black Dragon has four phases. Each phase consists of 25,000 health points. So to kill her completely you would have to deal 100,000 in total. Activate artifacts after each phase to progress onto the next phase. So basically after every phase a artifact will light up and then you would have to press it and then carry on to the next phase. Phase 2, 3 and 4, magical platforms are added to the arena to get to the artifacts without taking damage if done quickly. So basically after you've pressed the first artifact on the original platform, the other artifacts are placed around the arena but not on the original platform and the only way to not deal damage to yourself is by standing on the magical platforms. But if you stand on them for too long, you are dealt 1500 damage every few seconds until you are back on the original platform. So now I've got the general overview out of the way, let's move on to recommendations. So I recommend 75 plus combat, 75 plus defense, 43 plus prayers, so you can use the basic defensive prayers and soul split, 70 plus armor and 80 plus weapons to defend yourself and deal enough damage to kill the boss. If you haven't got enough prayer points for soul split, I recommend range protection against Queen Black Dragon. Super potions such as overloads to protect yourself more from Queen Black Dragon and deal more damage to her. And of course, because you're fighting a dragon, anti-fire protection. Damage boost in familiars such as Steel Titans, Blood Reavers, Calgary Demons just to speed up the fight. If you have Dragon Slayer perk on one of your items, then it just increases damage dealt by 7%. If you're on a Slayer task that is a Black Dragon, then wear your Slayer Helmet to increase damage. And finally, if you have completed the quest Song from the Depths, that just means you receive less damage from Queen Black Dragon. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about the different attacks the Queen Black Dragon does. So there are five attacks I want to talk to you about, and I will go through them individually to give you a better understanding on what you're getting into. So the first attack for Queen Black Dragon is called Fire Breath. Um, it happens from the first phase all the way up to the last phase and basically all she does is initiate a firewall which comes from the north side and it works its way down to the south side. You'll know this is about to happen because she will initiate a dialogue saying the Queen Black Dragon takes a huge breath. Now there are three spaces you can stand to avoid this attack. So in any random order there is a space to the west of the artifacts in the middle so that's the ninth square. Four spaces to the west of the ninth square is the fifth square, and six spaces to the east of the ninth square is the fifteenth square, which is the square that is shown in the image on the left. Now there is another way, and you can just simply tank the wall, which basically means you can just stand still and let the wall go past you. Now if you choose this option, the firewall will hit you twice, and if you're not wearing any anti-fire protection whatsoever, you will be dealt 2500 damage every hit. If you've got regular anti-fire equipped, you only dealt 1875 damage a hit. And if you've got super anti-fire equipped, you only dealt 750 every hit. Now, depending on how quickly you kill the boss, and if the boss even decides to use the fire breath, during phase 2, you would have to deal with 2 firewalls, and phase 3 and 4, you would have to deal with 3 firewalls. Now, there is a little trick you can do, but it can be risky. And basically, when the firewall is one space away from you, so one space north, you can run through it and you won't take any damage. But if you're experiencing like a little bit of lag, then you might get hit once out of the two times when you run through it. But to be honest, from personal experience, I would just tank the wall because all that running around slows down the time and you just want to kill the boss as quickly as possible. Okay, so the next attack is the Tortured Souls. So you know this is about to happen because the dialogue will say the Queen Black Dragon summons one slash several of her captured souls. Now to explain this as simply as possible, phase one has zero, phase two has one, phase three has two, and phase four has four. And basically if you get hit by one of the tortured souls attacks, they can deal up to 1500 damage to you. But if you manage to use one of the souls attacks against them, you can do at least 1050 damage all the way up to one shot on them. Now I'm going to tell you the easiest way of dealing with these tortured souls. I will show you later in the video. But basically in phase 1 you don't have to worry about any. In phase 2 if you're west of the artifact in the middle a soul will appear to the west of you. Now if you basically wait at least half a second after its dialogue then run to the space that's one space to the west of the tortured soul. 
the soul will use its attack on your space you were originally at and it will follow you until it hits you but basically because you've gone through the soul the attack has to go through the soul but it means that it hits the soul first which deals 1050 damage and sometimes one shot in it. Now in phase 3 you would have to stand somewhere to the left of the middle artifact and when the two spawn they will spawn to the west and to the east of you. Now you want to do exactly the same, you want to wait half a second after the dialogue then you want to run west two spaces through the west torture soul and that means both attacks will land in the middle and then follow you through the first torture soul now the benefit of this phase is when you run through the west torture soul it will be hit twice because there are two torture souls in this phase so if the first attack from one of the torture souls doesn't KO the first one then the second attack will finish it off then all you have to do is attack the other torture soul with whatever combat style you're using until it's dead now the fourth phase has four tortured souls and this phase can be a little bit tricky especially if the queen black dragon is using other attacks against you at the same time now quickly just before i start talking about what they do in the fourth phase when they do appear in battle you want to be standing one space behind any one of them so you want to run in a diagonal spot half a second after the dialogue begins and the attacks should all hit the same tortured soul now on to what they do in the fourth phase. So you know they are going to initiate this attack because the dialogue will say the Queen Black Dragon starts to siphon the energy of her mages. Now this can happen in the third phase and the fourth phase. The only difference is the amount of souls that appear. Now what this does is depending on the amount of health a tortured soul has left, 100 health will be taken off the soul so for 200 efficiency, so it's 200 for a maximum of 4000 given back to the queen black dragon so basically in the third phase if you choose not to attack any of the soul and it initiates this attack then they can heal the dragon up to 12,000 life points and because in the fourth phase there are four souls it can heal the dragon up to 16,000 life points now if the queen black dragon has entered a carapace stage which basically means it's vulnerable against two different types of attacks depending on what attack you're using and at what carapace stage it's doing then you can tank through the healing because you'll probably do more damage than the healing is recovered. But I will talk about the Carapace stage in just a moment. Now the last thing I want to talk about with Tortured Souls is the ability called Time Stop. Now this only happens in the full phase and the dialogue initiated will start with saying kill me mortal quickly, hurry before the spell is complete. Now while this ability is being used, uh, more dialogue will appear on the screen which is a basically a countdown until the spell is complete. So the next dialogue would be time is short, then she is pouring her energy into the hurry. And finally the spell is nearly complete. And if this happens then the tortured soul will initiate a freezing ability, which basically means for around 10 seconds after the freezing has occurred, you will not be able to move, eat or teleport. And the queen black dragon can initiate any attack during this 10 seconds and she can potentially one shot you if you're not equipped with anti-fire or any other protections. Now this phase seems really intimidating but it's really easy to avoid and all you have to do is kill the torture soul that has started this attack and the torture soul is really easy to spot because it'll be the only one that's in the corner with the dialogue above its head. But you just want to be a little bit careful on your way to killing the soul because the queen black dragon might have initiated another attack like firewall. Now the second to last attack I want to talk about is something called Extreme Dragon Breath. Now this is one of Queen Black Dragon's easy attacks to avoid and deal with but if you're not protected with anti-fire then it can do some serious damage to you. Now you know this attack will be initiated because the dialogue will say the Queen Black Dragon gathers her strength to breathe extremely hot flames. And basically all you want to do is while she's charging up her attack is stand either side of the original platform and make sure you've got anti-fire protection. And all you have to do is tank the fire breath until she has finished her attack. Now if you're in the center and you've got super anti fire or dragon fire shield equipped then you will only get dealt 5850 total for standing in the middle and 2250 for standing on the side. Now if you've got normal anti fire you will get dealt 5625 for being on the side and 7500 for standing in the center. But if you have no anti-fire protection whatsoever, you will get damaged 7,500 for standing on the side and 19,500 for standing in the middle, which is basically a two-shot kill. 
Now lastly, I want to talk about carapace. I'm not even sure I'm saying it right, it's carapace or carapace. But basically during the third and fourth stage, the dragon will initiate two types of resistance, but be vulnerable to three types of attacks. And she will initiate two different types of dialogues depending on the colour she changes it into. So if she turns blue, the dialogue will say, the queen black dragon takes on the consistency of crystal. She is more resistant to magic, but weaker to physical damage. And that basically means magic damage dealt to her is reduced by 25%, but she takes 25 more damage from the melee and range attacks. If she changes into the other color, the dialogue will say, the queen black dragon hardens her carapace. She is more resistant to physical damage, but more vulnerable to magic. And that means that melee and range damage dealt to her is reduced by 25%, but she takes 25 more damage from magic attacks. And if you've only taken one style of combat with you, then this phase will just either speed up your kills or slow it down. Okay, so now I'm going to move on to equip. And I'm going to do mid tier, then I'm going to do high tier. And of course, with any other boss fight I do, and any other guide I make, this is all just recommendations. And if you've got slightly different equipment, then that's totally fine. This is just what I recommend to you guys. So for the melee gear on mid tier, I recommend starting from top left, uh, Obsidian Cape, Amulet of Fury, Asylum Surgeon Ring, a Quiver, any tier is fine, a God Sword, and an Ancient Book or a God Book. Then for the armor, I recommend tier 70, so you would go with Banados, Helmet, Chestplate, Gloves, Tacits, and Boots. Okay, so moving on to the mid tier range gear, I recommend exactly the same, but changing the weapon for a dark bow and your tier 70 armor will be ranged. So it would be armadillo, helmet, chest plate, gloves, chain skirt, and boots. Finally, for the mage gear for the mid tier, I recommend exactly the same again, but changing the quiver for any room pouch, I've gone with Graspin, the weapon for a staff of light, and then the tier 70 mage armor, so subjugation. Hood, garb, gloves, gown and boots. Okay, so on to the high tier for the melee. I recommend a kiln cape, uh, the melee version. Then a amulet of souls, the normal version is fine. A ring of death, any tier quiver. For the weapon I've gone with a nox sif and, and an ancient book or god book again. And because it's high tier I recommend torva, but I would change the gloves for razorback gauntlets and the boots for steadfast. On to range gear, I would choose exactly the same, but change your kiln cape for the range version. Uh, your weapons for ascension, so you want the main hand, crossbow, and offhand. And because it's high tier again, I've gone with pernix, but change the gloves for ascension grips and your boots for flare frost. And finally, for the mage gear for the high tier, I recommend the kiln cape, but the mage version. Uh, room pouch, so you want to swap out your quiver. Um, for the weapon, I've gone with a nox staff. And because it's tier 80 again, I've gone with Virtus, but I would change the gloves for Celestial Hand Wraps and your boots for Hellfire. Okay, last but not least, I'm going to do an inventory guide. I'm going to start mid tier and then do high tier. So I recommend Serum and Overload Potions. Now, if you don't have the Herbal or Leather required, I recommend you just buying some Super Antifires. Uh, super Perenor Potions, Super Restore Flasks and some food. I've gone with Blue Jellyfish. For the combat familiar, I've gone with war tortoise, so war tortoise pouches and scrolls. If you've augmented your equipment, I recommend bringing along some equipment siphons. An enhanced Excalibur to restore your health points. A spring cleaner is always handy to have on you. And a elven ritual shard, which basically does exactly the same as an Excalibur, but it restores your prayer instead of your health. And finally, for your high tier inventory, I recommend exactly the same, but maybe you want to bring a little bit less food and change your combat familiar from a war tortoise to a steel titan. Also, I've included a revolution bar, um, depending on what combat style you're using. Uh, these are the abilities you can use. I didn't post one in my last video, and I will drop a link in the description so you can have a little look and prepare yourself just before the fight. Right, so now we got all that out of the way, let me show you the fight itself. But before we do that, let me show you three quick ways of getting to the Queen Black Dragon. Now the first way of getting to her, and probably the longest way, is by teleporting to Port Sarum. So if you just open up your Lodestone network, and then just teleport.
and you end up in Port Sam and now you just want to go northwest and make your way to this little cave over here. Once you're in the cave just make your way west uh, down this little tunnel bit and the first entrance is to the south just here. Once you've made yourself inside you just want to go southwest and the entrance to the instance is just outside this portal. Now the next way to get into Queen Black Dragon is by going to your teleports and then teleport into War Retreat. Uh, just to bear in mind you can only use this dragon's portal once you've killed the dragon once but once you've done that you want to make your way down these stairs and then you want to re-attune the portal so it's Queen Black Dragon. Uh, find the Queen Black Dragon in the tab, uh, there will be a slight fee but you only have to pay this once, uh, click yes then when you make your way into the portal it will take you just outside the portal that was in the cave. Finally the quickest way of getting to the dragon is by using the necklace you get from Song from the Depths. Now if this isn't in your bank then just head over to May's Caravan and grab the necklace, just right click and it will teleport you outside the portal in the cave. Okay, so now you know how to get to the dragon, I will show you uh, my way of getting to her if you're just starting out. So I'll be going for the range setup and um, what you want to do is head to War Retreat, make sure you've got full prayer points and warm up your hands. You can only do these two things if you have purchased the upgrades in the shop. So then what you want to do is teleport to Port Sound. Now all you want to do is just make your way down the cave and then you want to go down the other bit in the cave and just wait outside the portal. Now if you've killed the Queen Black Dragon at least once I recommend you using War Retreat's portal uh, for any other kill only because it's a quick way of getting to her. Also I would only recommend using the necklace if you haven't got any of the upgrades in War Retreat only because it just bypasses them and it's just a quick way of getting to her. But I do recommend at some point you do get the upgrades uh, because it will help you out with bossing. Now that you're outside the portal, what you want to do is drink your overload and your renewal. Then you want to summon your familiar and add any necessary scrolls. Activate your elven ritual shard and your Excalibur and just for a little bit more peace of mind, a aura. Activate your prayers, then enter the portal. So what I'm going to do is show you a few fights with the dragon, just to give you a better understanding on what to do. Then afterwards I will show you some clips on the, the attacks she does individually, just to give you a better understanding of it. So the first thing you want to do is stand to the west of the artifact and tank any of the flame walls she breathes at you. Then you just simply just want to DPS her health down until phase 1 is complete. After she's got her health down to zero, press the middle artifact and do exactly the same thing but get that right click ready uh, a couple of spaces to the west of you. I will show you why in the next fight. So once you've got her health down to zero, you want to activate the southwest artifact in the corner and uh, just be wary of any firewalls in front of you because you can still get hit. Use the escape ability or run back to the middle and get that right click ready again just in case for torture souls like this. Run through one and one of them will die, then you want to finish off the other. And if you kill them quick enough, they shouldn't respawn in this phase. So all you want to do is DPS the dragon down, then make your way southeast and activate the third artifact. Then you want to use the ability escape or run back to the center and you want to DPS the dragon in the final phase. Now you want to right click just here in case four tortured souls appear, but if not, carry on with the fight until the dragon is down to zero then activate the self artifact and the fight is over. And the good thing about hitting the final artifact is any attacks that the Queen Black Dragon is using against you, you won't take any damage. Now once you're inside, you want to open up the coffer and there's two things I look for um, to help you with the fight and it's the Super Restore Flask and the Rocktails. So if you take them out and bank everything else, it helps you with any future fights. Which just means you bank less and you can just get more kills per hour. I'm going to show you the fight a couple more times only because the dragon does a couple different moves in this fight but basically in the first phase you just want to get her health down to zero. 
then once our health is down to zero you just want to press the middle artifact to the east of you click the dragon again and carry on with the second phase right click just to the west of you for any potential souls now what you want to do when a dialogue comes on just run through the soul uh, like a split second after and it should kill it but if it doesn't just finish it off then carry on with the fight get our health down to zero and watch out for any flame walls once our health is zero then press the artifact in the southwest corner use the escape ability or run back to the center get that right click ready because again torture souls have appeared finish off one and then finish off the other then focus your attacks back on the queen black dragon if you're quick enough it shouldn't respawn in this phase again then just focus your attacks back on the dragon once our health is down to zero press the southeast artifact then use the escape ability or run back to the center and get that right click ready for the torture souls to appear uh, tank any of the flame walls she uh, uses against you then all you want to do is get her health down to zero and press the self artifact now be careful of any attacks because you're still not immune until you press the artifact then once the middle thing's opened up just head down and the fight is done Make your way to the middle again and open up the coffer. Uh, this time there are rock tails, so I will fill the rest of my inventory with them and bank the rest. Uh, just a little tip before you go into every fight, just make sure you've got enough prayer points and make sure you have enough time left to last a fight uh, with your overload and your antifire just to give you one less thing to worry about uh, when you go into your next battle. So I'm just going to show you the fight one more time only because there is something different in the full phase. So just like the first two fights, all you have to do is focus on the DPS, make sure you're pressing the artifacts, any torture souls you encounter just run through them and be wary of any flame walls that the dragon uses against you. Now we're just leading up to the final stage so you just want to head back to the middle and get that right click ready and in this stage four tortured souls do appear. Now I was unfortunate enough to get hit by the attacks only because one of the tortured souls was teleported to the corner because it was initiating the time stop ability but nine times out of ten this shouldn't happen and if you run through a soul the attacks will hit the soul which means you won't take any damage. Just make sure your health is high enough and any attacks the Queen Black Dragon is still using, uh, just be wary about that, uh, just keep your cool, press the middle artifact once the dragon has hit zero, then go into the middle. And just a little thing, if you do end a fight and your health is pretty low, then you can always use those rock tails just to bump up your health before you go back into the next fight. So now we've got the main fight out of the way, I'm going to show you the different moves the Queen Black Dragon does, just so you're a little bit more prepared next time you fight her. So first we're going to do the Flame Wall. When you encounter it, you can either tank it, or you can move into the one of three spaces the Dragon provides. There'll be a space on the left, middle and right. And every time the Dragon does the attack, the gap is always random, so just keep an eye out and you can either just stand where you are or to avoid damage you can move into the space. Another way to avoid flame damage is to simply press one space north just as the flame wall is coming to you and if your timing is right you won't take any damage altogether. Now we've got the wall out of the way it's time to move on to the tortured souls. Now souls are really easy to avoid all you have to do is wait until it appears on the screen and then wait for the dialogue to appear and then literally a split second after the dialogue appears you want to run through the soul and then the attack will hit where you were and hit the soul itself. Now the only difference between phase 2 and phase 3 is you get one extra soul. So if one does appear all you have to do is exactly the same as the other phase, wait for the dialogue to appear, run through one of the tortured souls and then the two attacks will hit the tortured soul and all you have to do is finish off the other soul. Okay, so now moving on to the fourth phase, so instead of getting one or two souls, you now get four souls. And when they summon, imagine a square, they summon on the corners of the square. And all you have to do is run through one of the souls, and the four attacks will go in the middle and hit one of the souls. And all you have to do is either finish them off, or if the Queen Black Dragon's health is low enough, finish off the dragon. 
Okay, so my health's a little bit low for this, but basically, when you see a tortured soul appear in a corner, it's going to initiate a time stop ability. And if you leave it long enough, what it's going to do is freeze the screen. And while this is in effect, for around 10 seconds, you won't be able to eat food, you won't be able to run or teleport, and basically any attacks the dragon does, or any attack anything does, will just build up for these 10 seconds, and it hits you all at once after the spell's complete. But luckily I had the defense skill cave perk activated, so I didn't die. But all you want to do is kill the torture soul in the corner and you'd have to worry about this attack. Okay, the next set of moves she does are the ones when she changes colour. Now you don't have to worry about these moves, but basically when she turns blue, it means she's more resistant to mage attacks, but less resistant to melee and range. Then when she turns the other colour, it just means she's more resistant to melee and range attacks, but less resistant to mage. Now the next problem that might occur when you're fighting this dragon is the damage you take when you're outside the center. So basically when you go to activate an artifact, you're immune for a couple of seconds, but if you stay outside for too long, you start taking 1500 damage every couple of seconds. Now to avoid this, you just want to escape back into the middle or just run as soon as you press the artifact. Okay, the next attack she does is the strong breath attack or the strong flame attack and all you have to do is stand to the side of the arena. Now I don't think you can 100% avoid this attack's damage but you can reduce it depending on your anti-fire protection so obviously the higher protection you have the less damage you take and don't stand in the middle. Because if you stand in the middle instead of taking 750 damage from the side you'll start taking 1500 from the middle. Now that is from the most amount of protection you can have, so obviously if you have less protection, you'll be taking far more damage. Here's just a little clip if you don't have any anti-fire protection uh, on you and it goes to do a flame breath attack, you're literally wiped out in a couple of seconds. Okay, so I think that is basically it for Queen Black Dragon. Um, I have gone through this as thorough as I can. I probably missed out a few things uh, throughout the video. Uh, a few tips, like I mentioned before, just always make sure you've got anti-fire protection because if you don't, you will be wiped out quite quickly from its attacks. Also, when you go to collect your rewards to take out the Restores and the Voctails, because they basically just help you in your next couple of fights if you need it, and sometimes the Queen Black Dragon initiates a lot of attacks, especially in the fourth phase, that can really screw you over. So having those rock tails ready uh, before your next fight really come in handy. Because some Queen Black Dragon encounters can be a walk in the park and you can get the kill time down really quick. But other times, especially in the fourth phase, the dragon starts initiating every attack it can. And really, if you're trying to avoid all of that and survive, it can be really annoying. So yeah, rock tails and restores really help in your next fight. Uh, the only time you can stand in the middle while it does this really hot flame attack is when you're making a royal crossbow and to basically do that you need to get all the components and take them to Fergo which will produce a unforged version then you stand in the middle while it does its attack and it completes the crossbow for you. So yeah I will leave a few more tips in the description for you anything I have missed out that might help you with this fight. Um, I do appreciate you watching this video guide and please stick around because I will be making more and yeah I will see you in the next one.